I'm visiting my home country of the United Kingdom on holiday. I arrived here on Wednesday, 10th of August 2011, when the newspapers were full of stories of rioting across the country. What strikes me is that no one seems to know why the youths are rioting. There was some political situation in Tottenham, in North London, involving the police's dealing with one political activist, but I suspect that many of the youths in the riots and copycat riots have no idea what that's all about. I was reading an article by Christina Cooper in this month's Good News magazine, and it was strangely foretelling. In it she mentioned that in our society there is a suppressed kind of anger that would be released given the right trigger. That article was published just a short time before these riots occurred. And that's a British magazine. The reason for these feelings is because of a lack of correct moral values. I believe that today's youth are tired of hearing the wrong messages about what really matters in life. They're told that the aim is to consume. The more stuff you have, the better you are. It's interesting that the riots were directed at shops and stores rather than at any political targets. They were rioting in their own neighbourhoods against their own people. Every generation has a duty and responsibility to teach their children what they have learnt about life, about how to live a moral life and what are the right values to live by. This is true for all cultures. In Canada, where I now live, Many of the First Nations Canadians are concerned about passing on their culture to the next generation. It's ironic that white people are also neglecting to do the same. For the past two generations, religion has been regarded as a taboo subject amongst the general populace of the First World countries, which are those predominantly ruled by white people. In Britain, there is a vast portion of the population who do believe in God something like 90% as the censuses say. 90% believe that there is a supreme being. The number of people who are actually atheists is very small. However, today's trend is to live as if you were an atheist. People don't talk about God or about their religious beliefs. Even those who are fortunate to have been given a religious upbringing from their parents and schools often don't see this as relevant to their day-to-day -day living. There is a trend to let children decide for themselves whether they want to become religious when they're old enough. That attitude is a complete misunderstanding of what the purpose of religion is, or about the responsibility that all parents have to pass on to the next generation what they have learnt from their forefathers.